Okay, our first question goes to Greg Hunter. So, Coach, I mean, uh, obviously a, a very loaded field in this tournament. Positives and negatives of, of playing three games against this kind of competition this early in the season? Uh, I think I think we're excited for it. I think our guys are excited for it. Um, I mean, it kind of it kind of tells us where we are and what else we got to improve on, and you know those kind of things. But I mean, it's we we've pretty much done it most years. It's just been a different, just a different venue. Do you think this is a tougher field than some of those others that you face? I mean, just look at some of the, the blue blood names. Mm, I don't know. We've been in a bunch with blue bloods. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think it'd be any, any, any worse or any better. Question, please use the raised hand feature and we'll call on you. Greg Carey. Bob, the challenges of Zach Eady in the 7-4, you know, the problems that, that he can present, how do you go about preparing for him? And what kinds of things have you seen from him that have enabled him to be so successful early in this season? Well, I think it's a combination of a lot of hard work that, that Matt and his guys put into to helping him. I mean, I, I saw him when he, when he first uh, signed at Purdue, and he's come a long, long way. But he's always had great hands. I think that's the great hands in seven four. But they they've done a terrific job with them. Uh, spent a lot of time with them and a seven four. Our biggest guy six ten. What's that? Six inches. Go to Greg Hunter. Bob. Three games in four days. Uh, does this help you late in the season in tournament time, conference tournament, NCAA tournament, when you have this kind of quick turnaround? That's a long way away. <laughs> long, long way away. It help, It helps us because we're playing quality people. We're, it helps us because we're playing well-coached teams. Um, you know, there's, you know, that's a that's an all-star coaching group out there. It's not just not just really good teams, but they're, they're, they're really good coaches. And, and so their teams are going to be prepared. Um, they're, I'm sure, looked at a lot of film, as have we. And uh, I don't know, it, it's kind of fun. It's, uh, you know, we do one of these virtually every year, and it's, it's kind of fun. It's a, little, it's a little colder than like Mexico or the Bahamas or Myrtle Beach or Charleston was, but. We, we, we got jackets. We'll be all right. Question goes to Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Hey, Justin. Hey. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, this tournament, uh, I think it just came around, you know, a few years ago. It's not really as, as uh, traditional as some of the other ones. But obviously, you know, it honors uh, Phil Knight and, uh, you know, his contributions, you uh, to the game I, I know you've you know built a relationship with him over the years and and you know it helped West Virginia become a, an elite Nike school and that kind of stuff I'm just kind of wondering how your relationship with um, Mr. Knight you know began and started and you know were you always a, a, a Nike guy and if you, if you could just kind of give us some, some background on on how you got established with Nike um they came to me when I was at when I was at Akron uh, about us becoming a, a Nike school, and, and that was that was at Janka, uh, and and then you then after that you get invited to go to the uh, whatever it is that the, the, they they put on a heck of a deal and do, do it at different places, uh, usually usually around the ocean. Um, and all the Nike coaches go, which was really a good thing because you got to to meet and know all the all the players, you know. Um, and uh, Coach uh, PK was there, and his wife, 
and everybody kind of got to know him and he was he was uh very gracious um so i know it's been a long time man it's been since akron we became a nike school at akron and then i went to cincinnati and uh i think it probably less than a year in we became a, a full-fledged uh nike school in cincinnati and then i went to a state and they wanted me to see if i could do it there and so we we became a, a Nike school there. And then obviously coming here, they were, I think, I think Nike was excited to get the Mountaineers on board. Obviously, you know, when you were at Akron was sort of like when uh, Jordan was just kind of beginning to take off in the NBA and obviously his rise and, and Nike's rise kind of go together. Um, it, it, you know, through the years, what has Nike and, and Phil Knight, you know, meant to college basketball and, and, you know, what was it like with Nike, you know, in those early days when they were, you know, just a, you know, they were just kind of another name back then when you were at Akron. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, back then, I think there were, when you took a look at it, there were different schools had different shoe companies and uh, I don't know if it's little by little, but Nike kind of took it by storm. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, so they, they obviously have their, their pick of the litter. Um, it, I mean, it's, I think it's, it's the way you get treated. Um, uh, they, they were, they were fantastic. I mean, you, you go to, um, one of those events or, or really it was a vacation and, and it was, I mean, you name a coach and I'll tell you, yeah, he was there. <laughs> And, and and of course Michael was there, uh, Charles was there. A lot of the a lot of the NBA guys who were Nike guys were there, you know. And you, you did you went and bowled, you know, bowled together. You you did different. They had different kind of like event things set up, and but mostly you know you sat around a pool and do what you do best, Justin. Right. I never pictured you as a bowler. Uh, well, when, you know, Michael was throwing it between his legs and, uh, David Robinson was, was, uh, breaking pens and, you know, it was, uh, I was more a spectator. To be honest with you. <laughs> Thank you, coach. Move on to Bob Herzl. Yeah, Bob, this is, uh, off the subject a little bit, but, uh, with what's going on in the athletic department over there at, uh, at the school and the uh, athletic being without an athletic director right now, uh, uh, has that had any effect on you? Do you have any opinion on uh, on what what is twirling around around you? Mm, but probably very little. Uh, I I met with Rob, but I mean we really didn't we really didn't discuss anything. You know, I mean it. They're they're in the process of doing what they do and. Obviously, I'm in a process of doing what I do. So it's life as usual, huh? I wouldn't say usual, but because uh, you know I'm I'm uh, having to field a lot of calls from various people. But uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, I just need to do my job, you know, and let them do theirs. Gotcha. Thanks. Go back to Greg Hunter. Hey Bob, you mentioned you're going to find out a lot about your team at this tournament. Um, what are the things that you're most anxious to find out? Well, we're last in the league in rebounding, uh, which if you, you'd ask a couple of our guys, they would tell you that's because we make more shots than you usually make. Um, there might be some truth to that. Uh, we we got to guard better, Greg. We, we, we really haven't guarded very well. We've got to guard a whole lot better. Uh, there's there's some more things that we'd like to be able to get into the arsenal and and this I think is a good opportunity to see how it how the things that we're we're trying to explore a little bit how they work against quality people and I mean this kind of particularly particularly with the younger guys I mean this kind of this is playing the who's who of college basketball I mean it uh, you look at the names there and I think everybody recognizes the names and who's coaching them and who their great players were over the years and so forth and so on. So 
it's an, it's, I mean, I think, I think you look at it as an opportunity, an opportunity to put yourself in pretty good standing nationally. Question goes to John Antoni. Run the floor and how do they run the floor? I'm sorry, John, you broke up at the beginning. I said, how does their big run the floor and how do they run the floor? Uh, they run the floor. Yeah. Um, they run the floor. I think, I think, uh, he, he, he probably to a degree picks and chooses his spots, but he runs the floor. I mean, he gets up and down. It's not, he's not going to stand at half court. I mean, he, he, he gets up and down the floor pretty well, actually extremely well for someone that size. And obviously rebounding is going to be issue number one for you guys right now. Well, we're last in the league, John. I mean, what do you want us to do? <laughs> you know, and if you listen to a few of those guys, they'll tell you because they make all the shots. So there isn't any rebounds. So right, right, right. You know, maybe well, get up to number nine. As long as they keep it up, you know. <laughs> Go to Mike Kazaza. Morning, Bob. How are you? Good, Mike. You've known about this tournament for, for quite some time. So I'm wondering in your off season work with the roster and the transfer portal, you could talk to guys like Trey or Eric or Joe and say, hey, in addition to the Big 12, we got this heavy duty tournament in November. Um, and you were looking for tougher players and better competitors. Did you throw any of that out there? And, and if so, how impressed or, or how influential was their reception? Only when they ask. Well, we talked about it when they asked, but I think I think the the biggest thing we sold was opportunity. Was opportunity to be what this program has been, you know, minus minus a year ago, um, to get us back to where we we are nationally relevant, to get us back to where. Uh, we're going to play in the and not just play in the NCAA tournament, but we're going to advance in the NCAA tournament. And this is a great opportunity for us. You know, it's uh, it's this is this is probably comes as as similar to playing in the NCAA tournament as anything anybody could do all year. Probably this in a conference tournament. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's that's what we sold. You know, we sold West Virginia University. West Virginia University, Morgantown, and the great people of, of this state and how much they care. Go back to John and Tony. I have one more. Um, you know, going back to your history. I thought that was a hell of an answer, John. It was a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, so good I could forgot what you said. Um uh, Probably didn't write it down either, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, going back to your days at Cincinnati, you you've had a lot of success in these Thanksgiving tournaments. I, I think. What? Why is that? Why have you been so successful through the years, playing so well in these? Well, that's an easy answer. In Cincinnati, I had great players. Okay. I mean, you you go in with the guys we had, and everybody's like, "We got to play those dudes." Yeah. I mean, we were we were loaded. What about here? You've done well here too. Well, I've had pretty good teams here, you know, minus a year ago. Um, we've had good teams. We've had good teams and good players. What do we got? We got we got a guy coaching in the NBA. We've got another guy working for the Knicks, and we got two guys playing in the NBA. Um, that's pretty good players, John. You know? What about this one? What about this group? Yeah, what about this group to be determined? Uh, yeah, I think to a degree, but I think we have people who have a chance. Okay. Man, really, that's all you can ask for is a chance. That's all anybody asks for. You know, I when I got in this business, I asked it for a chance. And then it's what you do with it. I sense you like the makeup of this team. It seems like a Bob Huggins team from what we've seen through four games. <laughs> well, I mean, it is and it isn't. We don't guard the way our teams have guarded. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you think back, you know, the guys that, that we've had and, and, and how they are Devin Ebanks. I mean, mm -hmm. Devin Ebanks didn't really, you know, he didn't come in thinking he was going to guard, but he came in and that's what got him in the league. Uh, and, you know, and he had a, a, a career with the Lakers for a while. Um, I don't know. I, 
every team's different, John. Every team's different. Every team brings a different, uh, a different faction. Yeah. You know, and what you try to do is you try to, you know, you, you, you try to make the positives better and, 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 and obviously try not to, not to have too many negatives. You did have a guy, you had guys diving on the ball on the ground for loose balls when you were 25 in a pen game. <laughs> and that's something you haven't had in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, that was probably my fault because I probably should have set those guys who didn't dive. Um, and I think these guys understand. I mean, look at our bench. I mean, there's, I mean, there, we have people, you know, it's not like, it's not like I have to, you, you're going to play me because you don't have anybody else. That's, and, and that was the case before. Fans okay. certainly appreciated it. Coach Huggins, I believe Bob Herzl has another question for you. I most certainly do. Uh, Bob, uh, I was watching the, at, at the football the other day, and it was senior, it was senior day. And, you know, uh, is that becoming extinct? Like, he talked about selling WVU and selling the town and all that. And it seems like people are more and more going with it and get money and come in for one or two years. It's not really traditional four or five of your guys walking anymore. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, on uh, on what you have to sell? Well, that was 100% the NCAA. I mean, so we've we've had to try to um, – Try to try to make the, the the things that they've come up with over the years. We we had to try to make those attractive in some form or fashion. Um, and it's and, and as as you're I'm sure well aware. I mean it it seems to change uh, quite frequently uh, as to uh, you know it it used it used to be if you guy gave a guy a pencil you 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 know you you may you may get the death penalty. You know, it's now it's all right to to, you know, help them get cars or money or whatever else. I mean, I, I just to be honest, Bob, it blows my mind that you got to spend a um, million dollars to get a high school guy or a transfer guy. That just doesn't seem possible to me. Um, the. You know, it's it's nice to blame the NCAA and all that, but really the courts threw that on them. Now maybe it was their fault that they got themselves in that situation by the not court, being. But well, Bob, the courts threw it on them because of 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 because of their arrogance, and and their their uh, inability to say I was wrong. And when the O'Bannons asked for the money that they rightfully deserved, they said no. They were the NCAA. And, he, and so they abandoned said, we'll see in court. And that's never a good thing. No, no, it's not. No, well, it's not for them. It is for the O'Bannons. Yes. It depends on which team you're rooting for. Bob. <laughs> we will uh, move on to Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach, I've always kind of wondered about the, um, you know, these Thanksgiving tournaments uh, you get so many good matchups uh and 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 a lot of these tournaments and and the thing of it is it's it's november and you know come march i've always kind of i guess i'm looking for your opinion on the grand scheme of these things how much do they really mean in the totality of uh what, what the season actually is well they mean something because they're factored in they're a they're 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 a factor whenever uh the committee sits down and 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 starts ciphering they they matter i mean now that of course they're going to say well that happened three months ago or four months ago whatever right but it still counts you know it, it it still counts in your body of work what 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 their what their charge is is to look at an entire body of work now do they count the last so many games more yeah, they're weighted more. No matter what what they say, they're weighted more. I mean, I've been on enough committees and 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 heard we. I mean, I was on the committee whenever we were supposed to basically fix the whole thing. 
And uh, that was before Mike Sly passed away. And Mike did a terrific job as the head of the committee. And there were, you name it, you know, the the, the, the people that everybody knows uh, as as big time coaches, if that's what they're called. Uh, we all we're all sitting around a table and we're all trying to come up with a solution to to make it better. You know, like for instance, for instance, the Segrin was never was never in there. You know, and when when I was at Akron, that was it. The Segrin was, you know, and and the, and the problem with the Segrin is you you almost have to, especially when you're at a place like Akron, you have to beat people as bad as you can possibly beat them, because that's the only way you rise. Right. So, I mean, there's there's if if you really took the whole thing and broke it down and looked at it, it's pretty complicated. It, 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 it's pretty complicated, and there's. Uh, there's a there's a bevy of 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 um, things that if they go your way they're great if they don't go your way it's it's a pretty good hit so yeah you know, it's it's you know what I think most coaches try to do is try to figure it out as best they possibly can and playing people early is you know I think that's good I mean because. Uh, let's say we go three and zero out there. I mean that's huge. That that's huge. That that puts us in a in a in a I think a different category of where we are because of you know because of a year ago. But you know when you go zero and three, you're now you're you're struggling to catch up. Right. No, I I I, I get all that. I, I guess say like you know the selection committee starts meeting in March. I guess. At, at that point, do you think, I mean, I, I seriously doubt if they're talking about, okay, well, this team won the Maui or this team won uh, the battle for Atlantis. Uh, they don't, at, at that, but, but just, they don't have to talk about those. They, they automatically are in there. It's your entire schedule. It's, it, it's not what you did in your conference. It's your entire schedule. So those things count as much as a game, you know, early on in the big in, in the big 12 or or the big 10 or whatever they count right Greg, you're on mute oh i didn't hear you call me i'm sorry uh, i was waiting uh bob you're going to soon add a another player the difficulty of throwing someone in midstream and sort of getting them up to speed. How, how tough is that going to be? I, I wouldn't think as tough as what people are making it out to be. I mean, we, I, I had to do that at Akron. I, I had to do that at Cincinnati a time or two. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's the same thing. It's my, you know, I play people because they deserve to play. I don't play people because of their name or, or who they think they are or who somebody else thinks they are. I, I, I play them because we're going to try to play the best guys because we're going to try to win. And, you know, that that is yet to be seen, who really are best seven, eight, or nine guys, that the guys that are going to play the majority of the minutes are. Of the media, do you have any further questions for Coach Huggins? There is no more questions in the queue. One last chance, I believe. Justin Jackson comes in just in the nick of time. Yeah. Hey, uh, has he has he started practicing yet? Is he is he able to practice with you guys now? No. No. Okay. So he's got to get clearance just to practice then. He's he's got to get yeah he's hey, he's he, we have a waiver sent into the NCA and we're waiting for a response. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Yes, sir.